do, and there are the golf balls there, which are glorious. Um, yeah, they are awesome. <coughs> um, but it's it, it's very hard to exactly say like like I'm I'm surprised that they're actually it's sort of the opposite of what you'd think would happen because normally mm. you know animes breach out to sport and now yeah. sport is breaching well, out to anime which you're, you're, I, I quite like but you know in the end it, it's not actually going to be bought by golfers it's going to be bought well, by well see here's the thing though I, I just realized these are not Dragon Ball Z golf balls these are Dragon Ball golf balls Dragon yeah, Ball go- the first ever series yeah, in, 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 Dragon Ball goes back, back a long way so I suspect this is going to be targeted specifically at those guys in their 30s or 40s or 50s who grew up on the Dragon Ball manga you know um, and who are getting them for nostalgia value and also you know, gag gift, but Dragon, Dragon yeah. Balls or Dragon Ball Z balls or Dragon Ball GT balls, Dragon Ball Kai balls, they're, they're the same Dragon Balls. Well, yeah, but that it's, well, it's so wrong. One thing we've got to consider is um, we're talking about this in a Western perspective. Yeah. Um, anime, anime and manga, especially manga over there, is incredibly popular. So it is very likely that a 12-year-old back when the Dragon Ball manga was being done yeah. is now playing golf. You know, it's it, it sounds ridiculous, no, but absolutely. it's pretty likely. Absolutely. Because Wouldn't that be wonderful, though? Retired people do. They play golf. Well, in, in Dragon Ball, I mean, that the, the manga started back in the 80s. Exactly. So it's been out for a couple of decades. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, no, and also, I, I... one point I'd like to raise um, just real quickly is, or one thing we didn't really get to talk again about is the price and why yeah. they've put such a high price on them. It, you know, I know the whole brand name thing, but it's, it, it came out to equivalent the equivalent of about $70 over here, did you say, Brent? It was something really expensive. Let me, let me go back yeah. and get the actual numbers here. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was, and you know, golf balls are, um, that box will um, um, is approximately 62 US dollars. That's a lot of money. That's but, a um, lot of money. One thing about the USA as well is, Although this is a strange point to make, um, most golf, you know, pack, we'll call them packets of golf balls, have um, up to three golf balls in them. As far as I've ever seen, True. they sell three golf balls at a time. Right. Um, so, you know, the fact that you're getting a cluster, you know, you're getting and... six at this point. Yes, that, that increases the price a little, but I mean, st- you know, I still see the fault, fault of my argument. The fact is, you know, th- you can get three golf balls for three pounds. Six other- golf balls <clears throat> is not going to go up to seventy. On the other hand, these are Japanese prices. You know, yeah. uh, three golf balls very, may very well cost thirty dollars over there in Japan. Yeah, probably. Um, actually, in in fact, the the ANN article uh, addresses our our question um, directly. A fan who first read Dragon the Dragon Ball manga as a ten year old, nineteen eighty four would now be 36. Yeah. So that's, so, you know, there's a, there'll be a fair number of things. Good yeah. to the right age. Yeah. Good age for playing golf. Um, mm-hmm. But another thing is, um, because, you know, manga is so popular, it's very likely that a lot of, um, or in Japan, executives yeah. are, playing, are, are playing golf, mm-hmm. and they'll have likely read manga when they were younger. Yeah. So again, you know, they might yeah. be younger than the general age of playing golf, which is right. about, I don't know, 45 plus mm. um, you know they might be 20 but they've read Dragon Ball yeah. you know they think Dragon Ball is awesome I have the money I am an executive mm-hmm. I'm going to buy these balls and if nothing else I mean it'd be a fun conversation starter on, on the links you know see what I've got isn't this funny you know sure <laughs> okay <laughs> what else um, Goro Miyazaki's next film looks fun well, what is this film? this is um Kokoriko Sakakara, as is very easy to pronounce. Um, this is an adaptation of a manga called Kokoriko Sakakara, which, oh, really? a- amazingly enough, it's set in 1960. Yeah, set in 1963, um, following the coming of age story of a an ordinary high school girl uh, who lives in Yokohama in a harbor city. Um, her father went missing. Her mother has frequently gone abroad for work. Her family runs a lodging house, and it's a uh, sort of slice of life story um, with uh, two boys that she knows, a newspaper, um, school newspaper guy, and the student council president. So maybe sort of an Iran high school host club thing. No. Um, and uh, basically, they, they've announced that the the film has been 
uh, almost entirely storyboarded, which is pretty far along in uh, pre-production standards. Um, this is part of their five-year plan, where they said their first three films would be, um, let's see what they, they described them as, um, uh, works by young creators, and the last two years would be for epics. Uh, the first work was Baro Arietti. The second work is this one. We don't know what the third one will be, uh, nor what the epics will be. So um, still waiting to hear on that one. Uh, we, do know, we do know Miyazaki is working on something. Presumably it's not going to be one of the ones from the young guys. Um, so that's pretty much what we know. Um, well, one, so Goro Miyazaki is Miyazaki's son, I'm guessing. Yes. Or son, yes, right. Well, this is interesting because this is not Goro's first film then. Correct. Um, Tell so, us was first, I think. Right. Yep. So what Miyazaki, when he started directing, because they wouldn't let him make a film without doing a manga, mm. um, he made a manga and then, but then on from the rest... I am correct in saying that the the rest of his films were just directed. He didn't need a manga. Is that? No, this, this will correct? be his second film. Yeah, exactly. But um, the, the the first one was Tales of Mercy, based on the the novels. Yes, and I'm talking about um, Hayao Miyazaki's father. How he started out. His first film was based off a manga, but then the rest of his films weren't. Correct. Mm. correct. Right. So it's interesting to see that his son has not yeah. followed this same path. Yeah, that's true. He, he's gone a, a different route in that both his first films were uh, based off mangas. Good point. Uh, as far as I know. Um, yeah. yeah, I know, but if you look at a lot of uh, Miyazaki films, they're not based off mangas, they're very often based off novels. How's Moving Castle that is based true. off a of novel? And Castle, but, um, Castle in the Sky, kind of, sort of. Kiki's Livery Service is based on a, of a novel. Mm. I mean, I, mean I, think, I think the thing is, it's it it's re- real hard to distinguish because even then, even if it is or isn't an adaptation, some adaptations do deviate a lot. And you know, we don't know how much is going to deviate from uh, that or whatever. I mean, I personally like it when something like that deviates a lot because it means that I'm getting a different experience. But um, but you know, it, it's it's going to be interesting. I mean, I, I think the thing is. It's a Ghibli film, hooray! But you know, it's it whether whether any like because Ghibli's I don't know, I, like you know, Ponyo was fine, but it it just doesn't seem to have that sort of especially with Western Otaku, it doesn't seem to have that massive like ultra push it used to. Like every time a new Ghibli film came out, it was like yeah, and now it's just like eh, <laughs> it's I don't know. I mean. Yeah, new Ghibli film, hooray! But it, it's almost like because you're getting one every one or two years, mm. sometimes it just does become hard to classify as news. Like if they started making a sequel to Porco Rosso, which they they sort of announced in a very backwards mm. way, then hell yeah, you know, big announcement, that's news. But you know, Goro Miyazaki is making another, another <laughs> film. You know, good to know what it is, but to me. Whether it's news or not is a bit debatable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, it, 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 that's a surprise that it isn't considered as much news because over here, at least, you know, in general, in the Western side, if a famous director's son mm. makes a film, it is absolutely kicks over the walls. Mm. Everyone cares because everyone, all anyone can think of is will they step up to the plate and take first place like their father? You yeah, know, it's interesting that it isn't as um, thought about like that in Japan. Well, and, and there—I mean, there were certainly tons and tons of uh, articles and discussions when *Tales of Mercy* came out about whether Goro would would be okay as okay with his father, especially considering all the drama between the two of them when *Tales of Mercy* came out. Um, yeah. You know, and all the, the 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 fight essentially between the two of them in the press. Um, so the question, you know, really is. Now, how that will be handled, um, you know, have they kind of patched things up or not? Um, will it matter? I don't know. Um, it also helps that you know, I'm sure Earthsea was something that Ghibli had been planning to do for a while, and then um, you know when, when Goro saw it, I, I mean, I wonder if there wasn't a little bit of sour grapes on Hayao's part that he kind of wanted to do Earthsea, but it fell to Goro. Mm. I mean, uh, also like. 
is it? I, I mean, I, 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 I'm quite interested <laughs> to see that it's based off a manga because mm. I, I do like, I, I kind of want to see the Japanese a little bit back into, um, into Jibby because Jibby just like come from a very good, a very good point here that he has a sneaking suspicion that, um, that Disney was advising Miyazaki on uh, Ponyo, or he was making a conscious effort to make his movie more accessible to a Western audience. Well, I mean, for starters, it was based off uh, The Little Mermaid. Mm. And, you know, and stuff like that. I mean, and, you know, whether it was... I mean, I'm not sure if it's Ghibli's entire now philosophy to sort of keep the thing to a Western audience, because they, they definitely obviously know that the Western audience has a sort of cult Ghibli following. I mean, yeah. you know, John well, Lasseter's the one who basically... It's pushing it forward. I mean, this is John Lasseter we're talking about. So I would be surprised to find that would be the, um, the case because you know Ghibli has not sold well in, in America. They sell extremely well in Japan. I mean, they're one of the top movie makers in Japan, not just anime. Um, yeah. You know, they do ridiculously well in Japan. So I'm kind of curious as, and I don't see what's particularly American about Ponyo. It doesn't seem to um, me to be particularly um, you know American as opposed to particularly Japanese. I I, th I think what there's an idea that I mean, for a, I think what he's trying to get at is um, especially I mean in England I'm gonna say because I'm not sure what it was like in America, mm. but in England the marketing push for mm. Ponyo mm. was very big. I mean mm. I have seen uh, I've actually seen like primary schools and mm. junior schools that still have posters. Wow. Of Ponyo, I've been to like three, and they all had Ponyo posters, mm. and and like I mean, for starters, there's a marketing push to the children and that. But I think um, what there was is that I mean, Pixar are, are affiliated with Disney now, and right. um, I think what happened was that you know if if it was related to a Disney film, um, you know, uh, and it's like sort of a Miyazaki version mm. what a Miyazaki retelling of the My Little Mermaid story mm. then yeah I think My I, Little it, <laughs> My Little Mermaid oh yeah, that's like, what I was thinking when you said My Little Mermaid I was thinking uh, of uh, my, my Little Mermaid My Little Mermaid you'll always be in the sea um uh but yeah like <laughs> so, with the Little Mermaid um uh it's just like that marketing push, like whether it was a very conscious idea, perhaps suggested mm. by Disney or Pixar. I mean, po probably not. But like, it, it's it definitely does like seem that they're trying to branch. Like you know, mm. uh, John Lasseter did say that he wanted people to he wanted more targets. He does want sure. more people. And and you know, I think maybe the what people are may there will be debate whether um, the real push is coming from Pixar or whether mm. it's actually coming from Ghibli and like the way they're trying to adapt things. Yeah. I mean, in the end, I think that people very much based on Ponyo because it was based off an American novel, mm. and and you know people uh, and with House Moving Castle, it was based off a Welsh novel, mm. and um, and you know it's um, and yeah, I do agree. Bibitago, that Ponyo does have a different feel to other Ghibli films, but mm. then again, it, it still to me does have a distinct Japanese feeling to it, and I think mm -hmm. it's just that there's this marketing push now that mm. John Lester is trying to forward, mm. and I, th I think that's what the real thing is, and that you know Ponyo is possibly just a fluke. I mean, if they're now ba I mean, if Goro's basing it off manga, mm. I think that's what maybe one of the the problems is that you know Goro um, it, it is trying to keep the Japanese in, and maybe yeah. Miyazaki's trying, uh, Hayao is trying to keep the Japanese a bit more out. It, I I the case. I doubt it. I mean, for one thing, I I doubt that Miyazaki can at this point be influenced by anyone at all in the universe. I mean, he yeah, becomes after Spirit of the Way, he sort of proved that. <laughs> he doesn't give a flying leap. Um, um, now, which is not to say that you know Disney doesn't have some um, uh, discussions with with uh, Ghibli here and there. I, I mean, to be honest, I, I I see Ponyo as being just like you say, it's it's a fluke. It is a it's a mess, frankly. Um, it, it didn't really come together, and I think that's I gotta lay that more at the feet of, of, of Hayao than at Disney. 
Um, not to, I mean, I suspect that a lot of that room.